Welcome to Session 4 of Complexity Explorer's MESA Tutorial, Age of Base Modeling in Python. In this lesson, we're going to upload a landscape so that we can agentize that landscape and create the environment for our trader agents to harvest and trade sugar and spice. Let's get started. Please open your Google Colab instance. And now the first thing we want to do right, is install MESA. Uh, and then import it through our dependencies. Now if you're using these header functions that are available uh, in Colab, you can also then collapse these cells uh, to make your code more readable. All right, we then got to instantiate our sugar and spice resource classes. All right. We also collapse this, uh, and then our trader agent class. Next, we could instantiate our model class, our Sugarscape G1MT, following the Growing Artificial Societies Convention. And this one right now just calls or instantiates each one of those other classes in a model instance. That if we run, it just prints out uh, each of the model or each of the classes, right? For agent classes for sugar, spice, and trader, and then initialize the uh, landscape, we're going to focus mostly on the model class. And the first thing we're going to want to do is set the size of our landscape. Now using MESA convention, we follow the Cartesian grid coordinate system, so it's width, or your, effectively your x-axis, and then height. All right, we're going to use keyword arguments, or quargs, to set this. Keyword ar arguments have the advantage uh, that uh, we can change these parameters later on, but we also can initiate them to a base class, so that way we don't have an error uh, if, we forget to, uh, if we forget to put in those parameters when we call the model. So first, we always want to make sure we have good comments. All right, so with our width and height parameters, we want to assign those attributes to our model class. All right, and this is just setting our self.width uh, is going to equal width, and our self.height will equal height. Now that we've done that, we want to initiate uh, the MESA grid class so that way we could create um, our, our grid space in which to load our sugar spice and trade in, uh, trader agents. This will provide the environment in which they can operate uh, in order to grow for sugar and spice or harvest and trade uh, for our trader agents. And now the good thing about MESA is that you could see all the code it's somewhat Python all the way down. Right, so when we call the grid class, we're actually calling the space.py file, which is available in the Mesa repo. Right, and as you look through here, here's the base class of grid. Right, and then here's a lot of the uh, the functions that we'll be using for the grid class. Right, that does things like get neighborhoods, iterate through uh, any of the cells, and, and numerous other uh, functions. All right, as you can see here, this is a class we'll be using, which is multi-grid, which allows multiple agents to be in one cell at any other time. There's also other classes you can call, such as hex grid, uh, or network, or continuous space. All right, and all of these uh, you can audit and kind of see how those classes function, as well as if you need to add other classes and potentially even contribute to Mesa. All right, so to call this, we just need to call that. Uh, instantiate that class just like we instantiated our sugar spice and trader agents. So we'll call this self.grid, all right, and then we'll call the mesa.space file, which is just this file in the repository, all right, or locally installed uh, on your computer or in this Colab instance, and then we're calling the multi grid class. Okay, so with that, that takes a couple arguments. So first, our width. Right, again, our x-axis, and then our height. And then it has another keyword argument called torus, which we're going to set to false. Now, torus means uh, it's just the shape uh, that looks like a donut if you wrap your left and right sides to talk to each other and your top and bottom to touch each other. Following growing artificial societies, we're going to set this to false. Right, now that we have uh, now that we're calling our self.grid, 
Uh, the next thing we want to do uh, is read in the landscape from our supplementary material. So if you look at Complexity Explorer supplementary material, right, uh, you'll see a sugar-map.txt file. Right? So we want to upload that right, for our sugar distribution. Okay? Uh, to upload this, we're going to use a, another Python library called NumPy, and we use a function called genFromText. So you do sugar distribution equals np dot gen from text uh, sugar dash map dot txt. Okay, so to make this function work, we first have to import numpy. So we go up to our import dependencies, right? And under Mesa, we could do import numpy as mp, right? Doing this is pretty standard Mesa convention to call numpy mp. All right, so that's part one. Now we could call that function. The other thing we have to do is make sure that a sugar map is loaded so Python knows where to look for it. All right, to do that in Colab is fairly simple. We'll show you a couple different ways. But first, we'll hit the file off to the left, hit load the upload file, and then wherever you downloaded it from the supplementary materials, upload it. All right, and now Python knows to look in your local file system, all right, in order to find that file. Okay, now I want to make sure uh, that it did what we expected it to do, so we're going to print out the shape uh, of the sugar distribution. And shape is just a numpy function to understand what uh, uh, what the data structure is uh, that we called in. Okay, so to look at this, we'll call shape, right? Um, and as you'll see, whoop, we made a mistake. Uh, so you can see we have an attribute error. Mesa does not have an attribute called spa spice, it's actually called space. So it's easy enough. Read that and then call it in. As you can see, we have a 50 by 50, right? that's our width and height. And we called or we printed the sugar distribution at 30. So that's just the column at your x axis of 30. Right? And we could also see the y position. All right? So we'll put 15 here. So now I got our width and our height. Right? So if we call that, we could see that we have a uh, that the value of our sugar at x equals 30 and y equals 15 is 4. All right, so that's actually the highest value, so we're up on a hill, uh, uh, a sugar hill for that one. Okay, and that just shows us, that helps us understand the data structure of our sugar distribution. All right, so we know uh, what exactly we're looking at. So now we want to make our spice distribution. We're going to do this just by converting uh, our sugar distribution. All right, so again, using NumPy functions, uh, another benefit of Python, you have this rich ecosystem that you can leverage uh, to get you know, lots of functions and capability without having it coded all from scratch yourself. All right, we're going to use their flip function uh, along uh, for the sugar distribution, which just flips it along its x and y axis. All right, and then we're going to use a Python, the standard Python visualization library, probably most common, all right, uh, matplotlib, to create a heat map so we can verify that our landscape looks the way we think it should. All right, now one trick is that they put the origin in the upper left corner, not the lower right. So we're going to have to use their keyword argument to switch the origin to the lower left so it's consistent with the Cartesian grid coordinate system. Right. We also need to import uh, matplotlib. So again, standard Python convention for matplotlib is you import matplotlib.pyplot uh, as plt, right, and then for a Jupyter notebook, or Jupyter instance like we're now, uh, we do percent sign matplotlib inline, so it will actually appear beneath our cell. Right, now we can run, uh, import that, so we run that cell, right, we run our model class, all right, and now we can see our sugar distribution, and that looks uh, like we would expect it to, and is consistent with growing artificial societies. All right, now I could check our spice distribution, make sure that it uh, flipped the way we wanted it to. All right, and sure enough, now we got hills of sugar and spice in each quadrant uh, of our sugarscape landscape. All right, uh, now that we've successfully, now for this lesson, we have successfully uploaded uh, our sugarscape landscape, which in the next lesson we can start to agentize in order to create our sugarscape with trading uh, agent-based model. Uh, thank you for joining us, and I, we hope to see you uh, in the next session where we start to agentize the sugar uh, part.